What's up, YouTube? How you guys doing? I hope you're all having an amazing day. This is Lucas, back again with another video for you guys, and today I want to share two things that I learned from Isaac Caldero while I was out in Las Vegas testing for the national finals. So it's not like I had a sit-down conversation with Isaac that lasted a long time or anything like that, but while we were both out there in Las Vegas testing, I was able to spend a lot of time around him. You know, he would get done testing in obstacle, he'd come sit on the bleachers. I always tried to kind of hang out in his general vicinity asking some questions. I'd already met him once before. I actually met him in Miami for the qualifier where I was there waiting in the walk online. He was there just observing and I talked to him for a little bit. So while we were in Vegas, I always try to start up a conversation, ask him some questions, pick his brain. Whether you love Isaac or hate Isaac, and Isaac has a lot of haters because he's good. That's just a fact. Nobody hates on second place. I heard somebody say that and that is so true. That is so true. People don't hate on second place. People always hate on first place. People tend to hate on whoever is the best. He was out there testing. I wanted to learn what I could from him. So I talked to him just a little bit and I took away two major important points. Number one, rock climb. I know that's not anything new, sorry. I have said this millions of times before on my channel and I've said it because of Jeff and Isaac, the two most successful competitors on American Ninja Warrior, the only two men to ever complete all four stages in the national finals, both high level rock climbers. But he specified, he went deeper than just saying rock climbing and he said boulder. And this is where things get interesting. I was talking to him about stage three and he said, look at stage three like a series of small bouldering problems, floating doors, a lot of power, you're using a lot of grip, a lot of pinch grip, you're using your feet also, it's just like a boulder problem. See it as a small bouldering problem. You stop, you get about 30 seconds of rest. Now you've got another bouldering problem. All the obstacles on stage three are so upper body dominant. Bouldering replicates those problems well because they're short bursts of energy, right? Top roping is something that requires a lot more endurance. Bouldering is something that requires a lot more strength. And we've talked about this on the channel before. Growing your strength will give you greater endurance, but growing your endurance will not give you greater strength. I'll put it this way, and maybe this will make sense. If you take the best boulderer in the world, someone who's amazing at bouldering, and you have them top rope, they'll do really well. They'll have good endurance just from all that practice bouldering. Now, if you take the absolute best top roping climber in the world, someone who just climbs top rope, those long, long routes, they have great endurance, and you put them on a bouldering wall, it doesn't translate very well. So someone with amazing endurance isn't necessarily that strong, but if you take someone who's really strong, not only will they be strong, they'll also have good endurance. I asked him, I said, if I had six months to train with you, what would you do? What would you say I should focus my time on? He said bouldering, 100%. I thought that was really interesting, and I've been putting that into practice. I haven't been on obstacles almost at all since I got back from Vegas. Kind of needed a break from the obstacles, so I've been rock climbing a lot. I've been bouldering a lot. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, at basically Lucas and at Brazi Bros, then you know I've been bouldering a lot lately. I recently sent a V5, V6 that I thought was really hard. It's one of the harder routes I've sent before. I've been bouldering like crazy, and tonight we get to put that to the test because I'm headed to ATP. I'm taking you guys with me. I'm gonna run a course and we're gonna see how well this bouldering is gonna translate to American Ninja Warrior. Last note on the whole bouldering thing, I think it's worth noting. I think it's interesting that Jeff is also a high level rock climber. I think he specifically was excellent at bouldering. I'm sure he does some top roping and some lead climbing, but if I'm not mistaken, Jeff does focus more on bouldering. I think that was his main discipline as a rock climber. Number two, the second thing that I took away from my conversation with Isaac was specifically about leg training. I asked Isaac, hey, what do you do specifically to train your legs? Is there anything you do? Do you do box jumps, plyometric training, sprints? And here's what he said, and I know this is controversial, Everybody knows if you want to go to the gym, you should never skip leg day. And listen, that's true. If you want to be a bodybuilder, even if you want to be a very well-rounded athlete, you should never skip leg day. But Isaac said the only thing he does to train his lower body is trail running. And if I understood what he was saying correctly, it's low intensity. It's not sprinting, right? It's not explosive. It's low intensity, steady state cardio, as opposed to high intensity interval training. You've got lists, low intensity, steady state, and you've got hit high intensity interval training. That's like long distance running, okay? Hit high intensity interval training would be like short distance sprints. Doing hit training will help you build muscle. Doing lists, low intensity steady state cardio, will really lean you out, it'll, it'll make you lose muscle, it'll make you skinnier, it'll make you leaner. That's why you see these marathon runners who run 10 miles, 20 miles, that are really skinny. Then you got Usain Bolt, sprinters who are jacked. Listen, it's a lot cooler to be jacked than it is to be super skinny. But if you wanna be successful on American Ninja Warrior, you need to be really lean, you need to be very skinny, because the more weight you have, the more weight you have to carry when you're on the obstacle. And Isaac said this, he said, listen, any extra muscle I put on my legs is now muscle that I have to carry with my upper body when I'm on the obstacles. 
So he said trail running is the only thing he does to train his lower body. That's hugely beneficial for your heart, for cardio, and it doesn't build much muscle. Those are the two main things I took from talking to Isaac while I was testing out in Vegas. Now I've got to throw this out there, all right? This is all just his opinion. Now his opinion matters because he's been really successful, but there are other really successful people on American Ninja Warrior. Drew Dreschel, you guys know I'm a Drew Dreschel fanboy. I think he is amazing. Isaac says rock climbing is the way, right? That's his heart and soul, that's his focus, that's his base from which all his athleticism comes from. Drew is an amazing athlete, but as far as I know, his base is not rock climbing. His base is parkour. He trains on obstacles all day long. There are many different ways to become successful. I had those conversations with Isaac. Those are my takeaways talking to Isaac. Here's one last piece of information. This is just a bonus for free for you guys. I asked Drew if he could only train on three obstacles to prepare for American Ninja Warrior, what would they be? And he said the pegboard, the salmon ladder, and the rock wall. If that is not a golden nugget of information, I don't know what is, all right? Take that seriously. If he said those three things are the most important to him, then all of us need to prioritize those three obstacles if we want to be more successful on American Ninja Warrior. Like I said earlier today, we are headed to ATP. We got a mini course to run. I'm about about to test this last two months of bouldering and see how uh, see how my grip holds up. I'm feeling really strong these days. That's enough chit chat. Let's head to the gym. So we just got to the gym. The last obstacle is going to be Cannonball Alley, and Kaye came to me and he goes, Lucas, I'm giving you permission to do whatever you want with Cannonball Alley. Make it as hard or as whoa, easy whoa. as you want. I am vlogging first, Lucas. Dude, you can't you can't have friends with YouTube channels. <laughs> Get out of my vlog! I got these things called roof pucks. This is my first time using them. Dude, these things are brutal. And at the end of a course, I don't even know if this is gonna be possible. One, go. Come on, baby, you got this. Big swing here, small swing, small swing. There you go. Small swing again. Don't need that much. Good. All right. Big pump. Big pump. Big pump. Nice. Perfect. All right. Match. And pull up. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Woo. I beat Dang. Now, because I defeated Kai, that means you have to go subscribe to his channel. Make him feel better. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. All jokes aside, go subscribe to Kai's channel. He's got an awesome YouTube channel. I'm not trying to be a sore winner, but Kai always beats me, so I had to uh, had to enjoy it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. That helps my channel out a lot. Remember, guys, work hard, stay focused, never quit. And buy the merch. Buy the merch. He said it, not me. Not like I did a shameless plug. He did it. Peace out.